Hi folks, I'm Father Joe Grimaldi, and you can call me Joe, and I'd like to welcome you to my podcast. But now, here's our host and friend, Ken Calvert. Well, hello again, everybody, and howdy doody, I'm Ken Calvert, and I would personally like to welcome you to the Father Joe Grimaldi Podcast. Friends at Hoot McInerney Star Lincoln, we treasure your time. Isn't it time for you to experience the star treatment? If you're in the greater Detroit area and you're looking for a new Lincoln, then Star Lincoln is your only answer. Father Joe Grimaldi and I have our new Lincoln Corsairs from Star Lincoln, but you may be thinking of something a little bigger like the stunning Lincoln Nautilus, the sleek Lincoln Aviator, or the one-of-a-kind Lincoln Navigator. Shop online with Star Express. Swift, simple, safe. Browse for your new Lincoln online and customize and order your new Lincoln from home. It's that easy. Or drop by our beautiful showroom today and visit with one of our expert sales associates. Whatever you choose, you'll see why we've been selling Lincolns for over 50 years. Hoot and McInerney Star Lincoln, 12 Mile Road and Telegraph in Southfield. Shop online at StarLincoln.com or you can call Star Lincoln at 248-354-4900. Uh, how you doing today, Fada? Everything all right? Doing great, thank you. You got anybody out there you need, uh, you know, a little, uh, you need any help with shaking it up a little bit? <laughs> a little extra something in the basket for the church, huh? Oh, I think you do a great job with that. Yeah, we try our best. <laughs> uh, we ushers a uh, little poke in the ribs, we'll get That's a little right. something, out, get of them, something sure. out of them. you something out of them. Well, now listen, I'm going to talk about two guys that probably were hanging around with guys that talk like that, although you probably did too growing up in New York. And sure. You are, can I give you your age again? Sure. 62 years old. Mm -hmm. Father Joe Grimaldi. Been there, done that. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Try 20 more years. Yeah, so you're you're going to be 82. Uh, No, I'm going to be 83. (laughs) You're going to be 83, and I'm going to be 72. You're a kid. Well, yeah. I'm counting on the doctors. <laughs> I'm counting on modern medicine. I don't know if you've seen this commercial, but they show a little kid riding his bicycle, and they said, this may be the first person to live to be 150 years. And they said, given the miracle of science and all of the things out there, people down the road, people being born right now, are expected to live to be 150. Yeah, I hear things like, you know, if you reach the age 70, you're bound to get to 80. If you reach the age 80, you're bound to get to 90. If you each, it's huh. kind of interesting. They give you a 10-year span to hope for. <laughs> well, <I'm, laughs> well I, I saw an interesting article, and it has to do with two priests from our area. Decades after they could have retired, two priests never thought of stopping. And, it, and immediately I thought, they did a piece on you. So, so Not I, really, because so, so I, I'm contemplating retiring. <laughs> don't shoot down the podcast before we <laughs> even get it started. Come on. No, no, no. I don't want to do that. Well, no, I, no, no, no. I, I, I know, think as we go on, we I may, work on these things. We and may then, explain and, things and as you, we go on. And I've even told you, I've warned you about this in, in advance. The bottom line is simply this, that Monsignor James Maloney of St. Anselm. Right. All right, so do do you know Monsignor Maloney? No, I don't. 92. 92. God bless him. And he's at the parish in Dearborn Heights there. He could retire, but he chose not to. At 92, he doesn't plan to retire anytime soon. Monsignor Maloney's legs might not be as limber as they used to be, but his zest for life and a hearty laugh are as strong as ever. That's great. Now, I really enjoy being a priest, he said. I like preaching. I like writing my sermons. I'm a very happy person with what I'm doing. Why would I quit? It's all I've ever done my entire life. Monsignor Maloney is one of a handful of priests in the Archdiocese who has continued to serve in a parish ministry for decades beyond the age of retirement. It's not something he's being compelled to do. Rather, he's enjoying every minute of it. Now, he says that people have to literally sometimes help him guide him around the altar, and I suspect that's true. At 92, wouldn't be the easiest thing to do, and other areas, but he's loving it, and you zip around more than, you do five times a day. 
I, I'm more very things fortunate. than I do. I really enjoy being a priest, by the way. I enjoy doing all those things you just mentioned. Uh huh. Giving homilies, saying mass, being with people, and so on. But it's interesting. There's a difference according to the individual priest. Huh? You look at the man who's 92. He still is able to continue. He may have enjoyed good health most of his life. And even though he's slowing down, he still is a pretty healthy 92 for him to continue. Uh huh. But there are other priests who may want to continue, but are held back because of different health issues that they have that other people don't see. Um, I know someone who has two open hearts, had cancer, and so they're contemplating retirement. Would that be you? (laughs) Yes. I mean, nobody would think that because I am pretty active. I enjoy being with people. So I think a lot of it has to do with health. Uh Now, when I say health, there are two kinds of health in my mind. You have the mental health Mm -hmm. and the physical health. Mm -hmm. Not everybody is in good shape mentally either. And so those were not. See, the two examples that have been presented to us in the media these days, they are wonderful people, and I envy them because I wish I could do that. But I don't think too many priests or other people can do that. You take the ordinary person, when he's 65, they start looking towards an age of retirement of some sort at least slowing down, doing different things, enjoying the family more, vacationing. and Then there are others that mentally can't even handle that. They can't even think about the idea of retirement. So it depends on the individuals. Now, the age of retirement in Detroit is 70. And usually after 70, the priest has to make a decision whether he's going to continue working as a priest or retiring. That's a big decision to make at 70. So that's usually made along with the archbishop or the bishop, depending on the diocese. So you sit down with him and you think, I could do it, I could, and maybe not. Back and forth conversation. Now, there are some that absolutely say, I am finished. 70, that's it. I am not going to continue. I want to relax. And so there's not even discussing it further with the bishop. But for those that want to discuss it with the bishop, they can. And the good thing about that is that usually the two people together make the decision. It's a good way of gracefully saying it's over. Mm -hmm. You don't have to continue. No. So nobody's going to have to tell you to stop. You tell yourself to stop. Because you don't want to be embarrassed in being forced to leave your ministry. You see, here's what happens. Like, if you're involved in the operation of a a corporation, a company, or whatever you want to call it, I think all of that is fine for a while. But then the stress of interacting with superiors the stress of having to report all the paperwork and all of that, the stress of dealing with different personalities gets to people and they eventually say, no, I want my retirement, Mm -hmm. that's going to be it. The same is true in the church. Church is no different. So a priest reaches a certain age, they like the idea of saying Mass, they like the idea of interacting with people, but they don't want the administrative obligations involved in that. Mm -hmm. So they would rather say, I'll be ready to help out wherever I can, but I do not want to be in charge of a parish. And so that's what the the difference is. Now, these two gentlemen that you mentioned, uh, you mentioned at least one anyway. Yeah, I have the other one coming two, up for you. But yeah. they are obviously people that enjoy good health, even the good health that's given to them at 92 or whatever it is. But they're willing to stay on because they have a good frame of mind. 
They're not upset with the interaction that might go on in a parish. They have picked out the right people to help them, and I think that's fine. Mm -hmm. But there are people that, you know, once they reach 70, they say that's it. Well, the second priest that uh, they mention in the story, and you may know him, maybe not, Father Norman Thomas, continues to receive joy from his ministry, having served the past 54 years of his 67 years in the priesthood at Sacred Heart Parish in Detroit. Uh That's a nice church. Uh, In the Archdiocese of Detroit, priests are given the option to retire at age 70. Many senior priests continue to assist with masses and confessions well after they retire, which has made it easier. Would you? Well, see, what makes that easy is you don't have to worry about administrative duties. You're right, exactly. You know, when you look at your date, you're supposed to be at St. Philomena's at 7 o'clock on December 20th. You put it in your calendar, you show up, and that's it. <laughs> right. Okay? Yeah. But when you are in charge, the administrative aspect of it is very, very difficult. Your life is no longer your own. If you're willing to live that kind of life, all the more power to you. Yeah. But not everybody is willing to do that yeah. because the administrative aspect of it gets people down. It's not necessarily the joy of priesthood, which I enjoy, by the way. Right. I enjoy it very much. But by the same token, when you're, you're being held back because of physical ailments or whatever the case might be, You enjoy the people, but you would rather not have the administrative duties. Father Thomas said the same thing. I like what I'm doing, and there's always more to be done. We have great lay people here who are all self-starters that have ideas and put them into action. Like, Like Maloney, Father Thomas has slowed down physically over the years, but his heart for the ministry is as strong as ever. His parishioners help him navigate the altar during masses and make his way around the parish. As I slow down, they get faster. And I like that line. Oh, sure. Said Father Thomas. As I slow down. God bless them. As I slow down, they get faster. So, I mean, it's interesting that prisoners have to literally get up and probably help him get up to the. And here you all said, Father, okay, go ahead. I relate to that. Yeah, yeah, no, but I mean, so. But they're assigned two parishes. They are at those parishes. Well, yeah, that can happen. When a parish is big enough to have people assigned to it. Now, most parishes don't have that. He's served this parish 54 of his 67 years. That's uh, Father Norman Thomas at the Sacred Heart in Detroit. That's a long time, serving one parish. And Monsignor Maloney of St. Anselm could have retired from ministry years ago, but he chose not to. I take your point. I totally get it. Running a church, being the pastor of a church, you're the chief... Cook and bottle washer, and as my as my, fa- as, and as and my father used to say. Yeah, but I remember when you were just helping out. You worked harder, I swear, or as hard well, as I'm you. I'm not saying you're not working, no. but you're not involved in administration. That's a big difference. Okay, man. I know. You know, coming here today, I've had to make. Oh, I know several accommodations. Yes, but, but what I'm saying to you is that they're always going to find a reason. People find you, not necessarily the archdiocese. That's my point. You see yeah, what I'm saying? I don't want to stop doing ministry. I know, yeah, well, that's so you're going to continue no matter what. Definitely. You may, not as a pastor. Yeah, though. right, but not as a pastor. Yeah. So you will work from your own facilities and take the, the calls from friends and from other priests who have asked for help. See, many parishes in the past they had suites of rooms in the rectory so other priests could live in the rectory besides the pastor. Mm-hmm. So there was a time back in the day where retired priests could be retired but still maintain some sort of accommodations at a facility in the they area. They were still there because they, they, they could had, retire and stay at the same church where they have usually been. Usually that's not a good idea. Because okay. <laughs> <laughs> they'll find you even more? Oh, no, 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 no. If what? you have a new boss, then you'll interfere with the new boss. Oh, I see. No, when it, when there's a new boss, you have to go somewhere else usually. Yeah, usually. yeah, yeah. Well, however, 
What I'm getting at, though, is usually there's room for another priest to come and live there if you want. But not, we don't have that many parishes like that anymore. Most parishes have accommodations for the one priest that's there. Well, so you're thinking about possibly at some point, well, you're going to have to. You want to enjoy some quality time while you still have got that vim and vigor in you, right? A little bit of vinegar still. Uh, yeah, 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 there's yeah. no question. Okay, well, don't, you, you always sound like you're kind of going, why are you putting me out to pasture, Ken? Leave me alone. No, but how else can I emphasize? <laughs> no, I know. Well, I get it. It's for the listener. It's not. I'm not talking to you. <laughs> you know better. <laughs> You're a beauty. You are a, I'll tell you, one of these days, Grimaldi. I know. One of these days. It's Pow. A- <laughs> to the moon. To the moon. Yeah. What's your least favorite thing about being a pastor? Oh, what's the administrative duties? Okay. Nothing else. That's, I love the people. Yeah. I love the... I, mean, I don't love all the people. Let yeah. me put it... I frankly know. Okay. But I love being with the people. I love doing the ministry. I love doing the masses. The, I love doing weddings. I love doing baptisms and so on and so forth. You don't like pushing a shopping cart at Office Depot, buying envelopes and stamps exactly. and making copies. Well, also your interaction with the archdiocese. Uh, uh-huh. Yeah, oh, yeah. Well, that too. And then meetings. Yeah. I'm. You reach a certain age when I do not like meetings. I. You know what? There's something about all people in radio. They love to have meetings, but I've never met a group of people that despise going to them more than radio talent. Okay. But the people that are are in a position to tell you you have to go to the meeting. Boy, they love having meetings because they got nothing else to do all day, I'm yeah. convinced. Yeah, I suppose. And I don't know if this happens. I wonder if this happens in the Catholic Church with a priest who's the pastor and back in the day, his assistants. Have you ever had a priest tell you how to tweak your masses? You may want to try doing it this way. Have you ever had that happen to you? Fortunately not, but that's okay. That's good. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I had to get you closer to the mic and things like that, but, but that doesn't. Bother no, you're me very, at you're very good. Yeah, in radio they love to tell you what you're doing wrong, and you know the old expression: those that can't teach. And especially, exactly. let me tell you something: in radio, nothing has ever been truer, <laughs> truer, more true, uh, unbelievably true. I say that because I remember one time. And we had what they called air checks, and they would get a cassette of your show from a day or two ago, and they'd put it in the little machine, and they would they had it all marked up where they wanted to play you something. And they played you arguably your worst break, one where you stumbled, or <laughs> pardon the Freudian slip. My Freudian slip is showing. They would always find something that you sort of stumbled over. In other words, you'd sure. say, like, you know, WRIF and Ken uh, uh, Ken Calvert here with you on a Tuesday. It's a Monday. The PD would say, you see what you did wrong there? And I wanted to say, yeah, you SOB. You picked the worst break I did all week, and you're playing it for me now. You're just a mean person. And that's why I liked being alone in a studio with my listeners on the other side, just letting the phones light up, showering me with joy and love. So there. But I'm retired. I don't do it anymore. So you have to That's do that. Right. Now it's your turn to tell me how good a job I'm doing. <laughs> so. Ken, you're number one in my book. Don't, don't, all right. Well, listen, Father Joe, you can't retire. All the plants will die. <laughs> <laughs> you don't like the administrative work? Well, then we'll put you on plants and agriculture, okay? We'll put you on the lawn and the trees. Uh, you got a prayer for us, sir? I do, because we were speaking on a very important topic, okay? Because of the dearth of priests. We don't have enough priests Mm -hmm. uh, to carry on the mission of the Archdiocese. And uh, because, well, retirement age is 70, and people are taking advantage of that, and uh, to their own benefit, I'm sure it's, that's not a bad thing. But we need more to come into the fold, so we pray for more vocations to the priesthood for this particular Archdiocese of Detroit. And we ask the Heavenly Father to bless us with laborers in our fields so that we can continue the ministry for our beautiful city. We ask you this, Lord, in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. God bless you all. 
This is Father Joe Grimaldi, and I look forward to seeing you next time on the Father Joe Podcast. If you'd like, you can email us. It's F-R-J-O-E-P-O-D-C-A-S-T at gmail.com. That's F-R-J-O-E-P-O-D-C-A-S-T at gmail.com. We're also on Facebook. Simply search Father Joe Grimaldi. And thanks for listening, everyone.